Hi, Apollo 17 was the last Apollo mission to go to the moon. On December 14th, 1972, they lifted off for the last time and we haven't been back since. And the crew comprised Commander Gene Cernan, Command Module Pilot Ronald Evans, who uh, stayed in orbit, and Lunar Module Pilot Harrison Schmidt, who was a real scientist. He was a real geologist. They, of course, had to send a scientist to the moon before they cancelled the program. So you've no doubt seen this very famous footage of the Apollo 17 lunar module actually taking off from the surface, and that's the last time we went to the moon. 99, proceeded, 3, 2, 1, ignition. Right away, Houston. That's your good. Excellent. Now, in case you're wondering how they actually got that footage from the lunar surface as it was taking off, because clearly there was no one there to get it, well, it, they actually had a full pan tilt camera mounted on the lunar rover. You can see that here. It's the gold one there in the front of them. And that was a full pan tilt and zoom system, and it was actually controlled from the ground, hence why its name was the Ground Commanded Television Assembly, the GCTA. And Here's some info on it was made by RCA and it was used on Apollo 15, 16 and 17. But basically Apollo 15 eh, didn't really work. Apollo 16, they actually parked the lunar rover too close to the lunar module as it was uh, taking off. So they didn't get some great footage. So they learned from that. And Apollo 17, they actually got the famous footage which we saw there. And there was actually a controller um, in Houston actually controlling the camera, timing it perfectly to actually... Uh, tilt the thing as they lift it off because they knew exactly when they were lifting off they have to uh, account for the couple of seconds delay from the earth to the moon etc and they got the shot good on them so not only could they control that, but it fed back video in real time. And this was all done via this uh, high gain antenna. You can see there that huge antenna mounted on the rover. Now that's all on a side. What I really wanted to show you is that uh, not many people have seen or know about. There was actually a second camera. Now this was actually a 16 millimeter film camera and they filmed a whole bunch of stuff with this. And I'll actually link in all the original 16 millimeter film footage down below. But uh, it was mounted on the lunar module pilot's window so we can get a great view as they lift it off. So here it is again with the 16 millimeter camera synced up. And it switches on now, and bingo, we get the liftoff. Isn't this fantastic? So we've got the pan tilt one from the lunar rover on the surface, and you can also now see the 16mm camera out of the lunar module window. Isn't it fantastic? You can actually see the descent stage still left on the surface. But here's the interesting bit, which I was... Look, you can actually see some dark traces on there, which are the lunar rover tracks um, and uh, footprints and other things left on the surface. Hmm. That's when I remembered the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. It actually took photos in 2009, famously, of all the Apollo landing sites. And you could see the uh, lunar buggy tracks and all the equipment left behind the descent stage and everything. Here's the original 2009 image, but they actually reimaged it at a lower altitude in uh, 2011. And you can actually see the difference. That's 2009, that's 2011. And look, we can see all the traces um, left behind by the moon buggy. So I thought, wow, wouldn't it be awesome if we could somehow match 40 year old 16 millimeter footage shot from the lunar module coming up from the surface against 2011 lunar reconnaissance orbiter photos, overlay them and see if they match. Hmm, let's find out. So here's the original image from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, and the detail is actually quite incredible in this. You can actually see all the uh, Lunar Rover tracks. Look at that crisscrossing around. There's ones further off uh, frame that go out to a further distance, and some of the equipment left behind, including the descent stage. This is great. Now, unfortunately, the original 16mm footage that I saw really didn't seem to have the detail in there. It was very muddied out and the contrast wasn't there. Uh, so I thought I'd at least have to do uh, some contrast enhance enhancement to try and bring out the uh, Lunar Rover tracks. I'd also have to do a perspective uh, skew, most likely to uh, accommodate the differences in the uh, Lunar Module as it was ascending, because it didn't ascend straight up. It did at first, and then it sort of... Uh, uh, you know, tilted and headed off at an angle. So I might have to correct for that compared to the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and, and do all that sort of stuff. 
And then I discovered this footage from a YouTube user, Luna Cognita. So full credit, I'll link in the video down below. And what they've done is they've done a perspective correction uh, to align it, rotate it for the lunar horizon there. So on the left uh, is, the, is the adjusted one with contrast enhancement and the original raw footage on the right. And look at this. You can start to see on the left there all of the beautiful lunar rover tracks coming out of there. So... Let's overlay the images and see if they match. So I froze the video at a point where I could see this rather distinctive uh, dark cross at the uh, top of the image there. And then I uh, rotated the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter photo and uh, sized it appropriately. And you can see them side by side. You can see they match pretty darn well, don't they? Amazing. Didn't even have to do any skew perspective correction. But hey, let's do a couple of little more tiny uh, tweaks on there and sizing and orientation and everything else and overlay them one on top of the other and fade them in and out transparent. And it's a perfect match. Bang on. Take that, conspiracy theorists. <laughs> 40 years apart from 16 millimeter footage shot out of the window of the lunar module as it was ascending from the surface of Apollo uh, 17 the last time we walked on the moon and then photos from 2011 looking down and they match perfectly of course it's not surprising of course they match perfectly because we landed on the freaking moon it's really there and but I, I was actually surprised at the detail we could get out of this and I didn't really do a huge amount of work here didn't expect this sort of detail even some of the faintest tracks in there you can actually see them if you spend a while and just uh, detail them I won't uh, point them out but it's it is absolutely bang on incredible 40 years apart of course if you want to actually prove that we went to the moon to these delusional idiots then well there's dozens of ways to do that a laser ranging experiment and just countless other things it's just ridiculous and yeah as if we faked it nine times unbelievable Anyway, I didn't set out to create a moon landing uh, debunking video. I just, uh, this just occurred to me to try and match these photos. I was curious and see if I could get any detail out of it. And just as an aside, after I actually did this, I just found uh, some, what possibly could be some better enhanced uh, footage or, you know, reconstructed uh, footage of the original 16 millimeter tapes. This is from the Apollo Flight Journal uh, website. And you can see we're about to uh, lift off here and you can see the greater detail, you know, perhaps um, really nice contrast there on the images, but you can see the lunar rover tracks and everything else. Now, Gene Cernan, being the uh, commander, was actually the last man to set foot on the moon very famously. Now, just as an aside, I've actually met Gene Cernan, and yes, he's a top bloke. Sadly, it wasn't too long before he uh, passed away, but I do recommend his book, The Last Man on the Moon, and I actually recommend the audiobook version narrated by Gene Cernan himself. I've got the original version on cassette. Old school street cred. Anyway, I'll link in that down below if you want it. Highly recommended. Along with the documentary of the same name, The Last Man on the Moon, do yourself a favour, check that one out. Trust me. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that and found it interesting. I'm, I'm quite proud of that. It's my own original proof that we actually landed on the moon by comparing that lunar reconnaissance orbiter footage. Absolutely amazing. Anyway, um, there's tons of other third-party evidence uh, for landing on the moon, of course. You know, the laser range finder and there's a whole bunch. There's actually a Wikipedia page with all the different third-party evidence, and I'm glad I uh, contributed to that. One of my favourite, though, and I'll link this in, um, is when, this was like eight years ago, NVIDIA actually uh, simulated with like a 3D model and shade lighting and everything, the actual uh, setup of when that famous photo that uh, Neil Armstrong took of Buzz Aldrin coming down uh, the ladder. And there's a lot of people that point to, oh, it, it's so lit up that it was lit up with stage lights and everything, but they modelled it, and they couldn't quite get the results they wanted but uh spoiler alert um <laughs> here it is neil armstrong is the light source and as we analyzed that video a little more we realized it's neil armstrong himself the bright there it is there. space suit that he was wearing is neil armstrong all that sunlight <laughs> off of him and back onto buzz aldrin 
it makes sense when you look at you know the albedo value, which is the amount of light there that's reflected is. into your eye basically from a surface. For the lunar soil is around like 12%, but the, the suits, because they're like a, a Teflon coated material, they're around 80 to 90%. And so they're very reflective. It's almost like a mirror, except you can't see something in the reflection. It just reflects the light. Once we pulled that information in and actually modeled an, a second astronaut and the light coming off of him. So there's the original photo. And then when they added in the light source, they got the extra uh, reflection. When they physically dropped in Neil, <laughs> who had the bright suit on that would reflect like 80 plus percent of the light, then it lit up the scene and it matched the original uh, photo precisely. And that's just absolutely brilliant proof. I love that. So anyway, there you have it. <laughs> Yet more proof. Totally busted. The moon landing thing's as busted as you ever want to bust. But hey, you know, <laughs> it's good fun to believe, right, that it never happened and they did on a soundstage. Whatever. Just wait until you see the comments down below. <laughs> this video is just going to get flooded with them. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting and useful. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. <laughs> Catch you next time. Hello.